This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we're making this wonderful 3D flower ranunculus cake. So let's make the colors for this cake project. We're using all simple or American style buttercream and liquid gel food colorings. We're gonna use some coal black, violet, royal blue, sunset orange, neon bright pink, and finally, some lemon yellow. To get started, we're gonna make a nice shade of gray with just a little bit of that violet in it to be the background of our cake. We want a nice neutral color. I wanted to add just that hint of purple so that the orange and peach kind of shades that we're gonna use for our flowers will really pop off of it. So I'm gonna start with some black, just a couple of specks. And then just a few of that violet just to give it kind of hopefully a nice heather feel. So a little bit of gray with just a little bit of violet in it. So we'll get this mixed around and see what it looks like. And I like the value on the black. It's got some more white down there in the bottom to mix up and it'll make it a little lighter. I think just add a tiny bit more of that purple and we'll be good. We want a nice, beautiful, light shade of gray. We don't want it to be too dark. We don't want it to stand out or take too much attention for our flowers, but we want something that's kind of a nice, cool tone so that those warm colors will pop off of it. And I think that is gonna be just lovely. Next, we're gonna make our green color. So I've added a little bit of my royal blue and lemon yellow to my container lid, and I've still got some black out there, and I've added some toothpicks. I want to make a nice kind of light, sagey green color. A little bit heavier on the yellow, so maybe a little more towards the moss than sage, I would say, is a better descriptor. And I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to pop against that gray that we made so i'm adding a little more yellow than blue and then just a little bit of that black so it's got a little bit of a dullness because i really want the flowers to be the thing that kind of sing on this cake and really attract the attention and kind of pull in your eye so i want a nice green color but i don't want it to be too vibrant so that's going nicely. I think it's going to need some more yellow and a little bit more of that black just to kind of dull it out a little bit. So a little more yellow, a little more black. where this is going. I think it just needs a hint more of that black to it. Maybe just a tiniest bit of the blue. And there we go. I think that's going to be an absolutely beautiful color. This is going to be for our stems. And for the very center of our flower, it gives us a nice kind of wonderfully dull kind of mossy shade. It's going to stand out against our black, but not draw too much attention. So you'll see it, you'll know it's there, but it's not really going to draw in your eye. And I like where this is going. I'm just actually going to make a second color of green 
And I'm going to do it in the same cup just to save a little time and energy. I'm just going to move most of this over to one side. And then I have a little extra white because I just need a little bit of a second color of green. I'm going to use this one for stems, leaves, and the very center of my flower, but I want a second lighter shade. So I'm just going to take that and basically just what's on my spatula and mix that in with this white on the other side of the cup. And that's going to give me a lighter value, basically the same color. That I can really kind of control very easily. This is easy. I'm just mixing a little bit of that green in with that white to make a second lighter shade. And this is an easy way to kind of make ombre fades. Start with your darkest color and then make lighter and lighter shades. And if I want to, I can add just a little touch of yellow, just tweak the color a tiny bit. And this will make a nice second shade of green for my flowers. So there we are. We've got two beautiful colors of green that are gonna look wonderful on our cake. So for my next color, I'm going to make some pink, and this is going to be a nice light shade of pink. It's for some of the kind of central petals on this flower. The ones on the outside are going to be a little darker, so we're going to kind of fade from a green to pink to orange. So I just want to do a few little specks of that bright pink because it's pretty intense, and we're not making that much. We just want to make a nice light soft shade of pink that really reads and will look beautiful against that nice light green color that we made. So it's getting there just a little more. It's kind of very soft, soft color right now. And I think that will be just enough to do the trick. So a beautiful pastel shade. It's definitely pink, but it's not too bright or vibrant, and it's going to look wonderful next to that light green color that we made. So the next color we're going to make is going to be a kind of peachy color, and it's going to be a little more vibrant. So we're actually going to use drops, and I'm going to start with one of my pink and one of my orange and I'm just going to mix it around check out what I've got and adjust as needed so blending that bright pink and that sunset orange should give us a nice shade of peach and we want it to be there and be a little vibrant but not be too dark or intense I want it to be kind of a nice medium tone, and I think this might actually be great. I might just need to pull it a little towards the pink. Because we're definitely in that peach range, but it's reading a little bit orange, a little bit vibrant. So if you ever go too far with a color, you can always add liquid whitener or some white buttercream. which I might do. I might lighten this up just a little bit. But first I'm going to add a little pink just to skew my color balance more towards the pink. And then I think I'll lighten it up going to add a little bit of white just because it's a little vibrant so just to take it down a notch and I can keep going until I get the shade that I want but I think that's going to look beautiful against the gray and also with the pinks and the greens so I have a nice kind of shade of beautiful peachy orange so we're going to use four 12 inch disposable decorating bags. We've got one fitted with a coupler that has our darker shade of green in it. And I'm going to use it with a 12. And then I'm periodically going to change and use it with a number five, 
So those two are round tips. And then I'm also going to use it with a 101 petal tip. So smallest one I've got and also a 103. The other three bags, the tips are fitted directly in them with my lighter shade of green. I have that fitted with my 102 petal tip. So that one's also a straight petal tip. My pink I have with a 61. So this is a curved petal tip. It's still a standard size tip. So it's a little smaller than the next one, but it's got that nice curve to the opening. And finally, with my nice kind of peach shade, I have my 123. This is a larger size decorator tip. And you can see it's also a curved petal tip as well. So we've got our cake ready to start decorating it. And we're going to cover it with a nice layer of that light gray color we made. It's a nice soft gray. And I already have my cake. It's four inch rounds that I've split and filled and I've coated with a nice layer of white buttercream and it's nice and solid. So it's going to be easy to put on a nice light coat of gray with frostings, especially darker colors or colors that are, can stain. I always choose to do it in a nice light layer on the outside rather than coating the whole thing in the color because it allows people to eat around it and it reduces the chance that the food coloring will really affect the overall taste of the cake because it's just kind of on that light layer on the outside and people can eat around it. So I'm just going to do what I would normally do, nice big blob on top and smooth it out nice and thin. Once you've got those tops done, just gently go over the sides. And the main thing here is just to make sure you get on a nice, smooth, even layer and we don't have any of that white showing through. So I'm going to go over it with my spatula and apply that gray. And then I'll go over it with my bowl scraper and my bench scraper as well. And since it's a tiny cake, you can see it doesn't take that long. So it becomes a lot like applying a layer of fondant to the outside of your cake, but this is definitely yummier and more edible. So once I've got that on there, Give it a nice pass. Find the bowl scraper is a nice easy way to really press the frosting into any gaps, dips, fill any little air pockets in or air bubbles. And I can really see where I have excess and where I maybe don't have quite enough by how it kind of loads up on there. Once I've got a nice application, I'm just going to go over it lightly with my bench scraper. It's a nice way to really kind of square things off, make those nice straight sides up and down. And once that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and trim up the top. So we just want to make sure we use nice, gentle, light pressure. I find it's easiest to start away from myself and swipe towards my body towards myself, so working from the back of the cake. And just gently sweeping across. Your spatula becomes kind of like sandpaper. And just smoothing that out and making a nice flat surface. And if it's the first time you've done this, it might take you more than one pass, but this is looking really great. So we're gonna pop it in the fridge, maybe clean it up a little bit before we put our flowers on. So let's talk about a few of the techniques that we're going to use on our 3D ranunculus cake. The first is going to be a dot that we're going to make with our 12 tip, and this is going to be the center of our flowers. So I'm going to a nice big tip, and I'm just using it on the green because I have extra. I made quite a bit because I'm going to use it to do centers, a few petals, and then my stems and my leaves. But you can use any color. So if you have extra white or another color laying around, you can use this 12 tip with any of them. And anytime we're doing a dot, up off the surface, let that frosting balloon out, 
and then we just want to finish it with a little swirl. And that's going to give us a nice mound to work on. We'll do bigger ones for the big full flowers and smaller ones for our kind of half open or bud ones. I'm going to change over to my five tip with the same color. And I'm going to use this for my stems. And since we're working on the side of the cake, we're going to glide just gently against the surface, kind of hovering there, like barely touching it to not touching it at all, but just really close. We're going to be at a 45 degree angle and we're going to line the bag up with the direction that we're pulling. So think about the back of the bag pointing towards the finishing point of where you want to end up. That means that our tip is going to be in the right position and it won't impede the flow of frosting and it'll give us less wiggles and bumps in our line. And we just want to gently touch the surface, start, and then pull pull along and then when we finish you can stop and then pull away for a nice clean finish if you're looking to taper then you just want to relax your pressure as you're about to finish the line for our petals we're going to use the same soft arc motion for every tip so this is going to be for our 101 our 102 our 61 and our 123 and we always want to make sure that the fat end is pointed down so it's the bottom of the petal it's fat to give it stability and act as a base and we're going to pull in just a soft arc shaped motion and that's going to give us all those petals how we hold the tip and orient the opening will change how they're positioned and we'll go over that in more detail in just a second the other thing that we're going to do is use one of our petal tips to create some leaves. And we're going to do it a bit differently and hold it in what I would consider kind of a funny and unusual angle. So I'm going to hold the bag so that this tip is perpendicular to the surface. And I'm basically going to follow a little kind of jagged pattern. These kind of have unusual shaped leaves. And I want to just use it to essentially draw these kind of fun little lines. So I'm just pulling it in and out, in and out. So quick petals, I can use it to elongate and go again. And that's gonna give us a nice feel to those leaves. They have a little bit of texture and they'll have a little bit more of a realistic shape and kind of look like the leaves that you would find on a ranunculus plant. And there's usually a couple of them hanging off the bottom of a grouping and they have kind of nice big floppy leaves with these kind of unusual shape to them. So those are the basic techniques that we're going to use on this cake. We're going to talk next about how we're going to use these two to combo together and make our blossoms. So let's talk about building our blossoms. So for our ranunculus flowers, we're gonna start with a dot on our flower nail. So a nice big dot with our 12 tip. Our first petals are gonna be with our 101, so darkest color of green. And you can see I've got it laying flat across the top. The skinny end is gonna be pointed towards the center, the fat end on the outside edge, and basically I'm gonna do three to four overlapping petals, and I wanna make a nice closed center with that dark green. I'm gonna then switch to my bag with my 102, and I'm just gonna hold that one so that the tip is oriented at almost 11 o'clock angle. So think about a clock face, and the skinny end is pointed towards 11 o'clock, right? This is going to open that kind of first row of petals up and I'm just going to pull that soft arc motion with that 102 tip and I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to start each petal by kind of retracting a little bit and starting it halfway kind of in the middle of the one before and we'll go into that a little bit more while we're piping. Then I'll change to my 61 which has my light pink and I'm just going to open that angle up a little bit and slide the fat end further down my number 12 tip dot. And I'm gonna do probably two layers of petals with those. And then to finish up, I'll do my 123 tip. This one even further down, if you can, all the way at the bottom. And you're basically just gonna kind of cup and enclose those petals and pull a nice row of them all the way around to kind of finish it off enclose it and so that you don't see any of that green at the bottom and our 123 tip is just going to be held at a straight up and down angle so it's going to orient so that the 
very top of the tip is pointing towards 12 o'clock if we're imagining our clock face. So this is just a little bit about how we're gonna build those big ranunculus blossoms. I'm also gonna do some with smaller dots and just go to the 61 and do extra layers of it to make kind of smaller half opened ones. And then I'll do some dots on the side that'll cover probably with my 102 and my 61 to make some buds as well. If you want a more detailed explanation about making the big, beautiful ranunculus flowers, we also have a video covering this in our flower series. So it's a full in-depth tutorial on just the flower. So if you want some more detail than that, that's one to check out. Now that we've talked about this, we're gonna go ahead and pipe some on our flower nail for some practice. So let's try one on our flower nail. We're gonna start with our bag of green that has our 12 tip. You can use any color for this part. You wanna be straight up and down and up off the surface and you wanna pipe yourself a nice big dot. That's gonna give you something to work on. And so that we're ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the tip on my green because I'll need it with my 102 as well so that it's ready to grab when I need it. Nope, sorry. This one has my 101, forgive me. Right, and it's actually going to be our next step. So let's get set up. We've got our bag, our 101 tip now, and we're gonna lay it so that that tip is almost flat against the surface, right? And we're gonna pipe three to four petals, just going across all tightly overlapping, and it's almost gonna give me kind of a nice triangular feel. And these can be almost straight. And you'll notice the back of the bag is kind of pointing towards my right shoulder and I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle. And that lays on a nice center of petals. If you need to, you can tuck another one in there. Just so you have a nice kind of overlapping, tightly closed pattern. My next one is going to be my lighter green. This one, I'm going to hold so that that fat end is just at the outside of that kind of area I made with my green. And I'm gonna hold it so that we're at a 45 degree angle, back of the bag is towards my shoulder, and the point of the tip is facing towards 11 o'clock. And I'm just gonna pull those soft arc motions. It's a little easier to see now that we're in a different color, right? And I'm gonna start the next one kind of halfway, right? so that they're overlapping. So pull a petal and then retract back and start in the middle and pull the next one. This is going to give the whole flower a nice kind of overlapping, unfurling feel. And just do as many as you need to to go around and make a nice little center for you that looks like it's just starting to open up. So you can see now it's easier to see the petals in the center and the contrast between the two colors where you have that nice tightly closed center and we have these slightly lighter petals that are starting to open up. It's time to switch to our 61 and we're going to change that so that we're holding that tip right kind of at a similar angle doesn't want to focus. Um, so it's a curved tip. So I just want it to be not quite straight up, just a little curved in because we want it to enclose that green a little bit. So it's more so the position of 1130, right? We're not quite to noon yet. And just pick two petals to start in between. And because the tip is bigger, even though you're lower down, you'll enclose them just a little bit. So I like to get a little bit of extra of that light green on there because some of it will get covered up and enclosed with that pink. And then it's kind of just kind of peeking out and it creates a really beautiful effect. I typically do two rows with whatever color I'm using my 61 with. And I do the same thing where I retract back and start in the middle of the petal before to do the next one. So I just wanna go around a few times. And you can see that's taken us about halfway down that little mound. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over 
to my 123. And as long as you didn't make your mounds too tall, right, if it's not too high, then holding it straight up and down and being right against the surface, you should only really need one row of petals. I might put the occasional one on to help finish it, but we're going to do the same thing where we're doing that slight soft arc and we're going to go in the middle of the one before to do the next one. And by holding it straight up and down, it allows you to kind of tuck that fat end underneath and kind of enclose everything and give your flower a beautiful shape. And if you need to, you can always do a few more petals to round it out every once in a while. I feel like they end up fatter on one side than on the other and they just need an extra petal or two to make things look beautiful. So you can see we have a beautiful ranunculus flower. We're going from a green to kind of lovely peachy shade and it's gonna look beautiful on our nice gray colored cake. So now that I've got a full blossom, I'm probably gonna to wanna to pipe two to three of these just so I have some extras and I can choose my favorite ones later. And I'm gonna pipe some half blossoms as well. So I'm gonna do the same process where I start with my 12 tip and my dark green and I'm only going to go to my light pink and I'm going to pipe the dot a little smaller so that there's less area and I don't need that bigger tip to take up the bottom and I'm just going to do it with the lighter pink and this will give me a slightly different color fade and gradient it'll give me some variation on my cake in both size and color so I'm going to start here pipe my dot Keep it relatively small. Change my tip over. And repeat my process. So same thing, laying across. Nice and tight for that center three to four of those petals so you've got a nice closed center and then I'm going to go ahead with my light green my 11 o'clock angle just remember to start your petals kind of halfway back on the one before and I'm going to do two rounds of this green So I want to give this one a slightly different feel than the one before. And then I'm going to go in with my pink and do the same thing I did before. So almost between like 11 and 12. So think about like 1130, just so it encloses that light green a little bit. You can see I've got that smaller base that I'm piping on. So I'm quickly kind of enclosing everything. And I'm just going to do two rounds with it pointing in and then one with it pointing straight up. And this should allow me to tuck underneath and finish that bottom part that's a little bit messy right now. And you can see that gives us a beautiful smaller ranunculus flower with a different color fade to it right it doesn't have that same brightness because there's none of that kind of peachy orange on the outside and you can see it's much smaller in size. So that's gonna give us some variation in not only color, but size to our flowers that we're gonna put on our cake. I'm gonna go ahead and pipe a couple of more of these as well. We'll put both our large and medium sized ones in the refrigerator. And once they're ready, we'll pull them out and work on placing them on our cakes. So 
I'm going to get started on putting the finishing touches on this cake. I'm going to start with doing my stems and kind of putting in some little sepals and leaves just so I have spots for my flowers kind of marked out. And I just want to think about how I want to make these stems because I'm going to draw these lines on my cake and I don't want them to necessarily just be straight. I feel like ranunculus flowers always have a nice kind of little wiggle, a kind of little vibe to the stems. They're just always a little irregular. There's always some kind of twists and turns. So I don't necessarily just want to draw straight lines. And I want to do some buds off to the sides, put some of my kind of smaller ones, and then probably one really big one. So I'm going to go with my big one there. Maybe have one of my smaller ones cross behind so we're getting some nice little variation and have my little bud do something fun off to the side and kind of repeat that just a little bit but not exactly So I just want to make a nice kind of look like a little grouping or bunch here on the side of the cake and just kind of think about where I'm going to put in my leaves. And then I want to start working on my lines. So I'm going to start with this one right here in the middle and I'm going to hold the bag at a 45 degree angle to the cake and I just want to kind of orient it and change as I go, right? So the back of the bag is always kind of pointing in the same direction of my line. It's gonna give me a nice smooth flow of frosting. And I'm just gonna kind of glide along the surface, change direction as I go. And that should give me a nice, beautiful, smooth line. You see, it's got just a little hiccup to it, but that's a nice little bit of natural variation. So for the next part, I've got a stem going kind of behind this. So I'm just going to start right here at the top and go up. And then I'm going to join and go down, right? So I'm going to get a nice little angle and I'll have to kind of um, pull this towards perpendicular as I get down, but it's a great way to join those lines up. and make it nice and smooth and kind of seamless. You can see it gets a beautiful little effect. I've got some stems going in front, some crossing behind, some with a little wiggle, some that are more straight and just kind of flopping over. And I feel like this is giving us a nice, really beautiful flow. And I've got some negative space in there, some spots to put some tiny leaves in. I think this is going to work out nicely and be really beautiful. Wonderful. And I'm just going to kind of change my angle. I'm going to turn away from you because it's going to be the easiest thing to put this last one in. And also so that I can see. So do this at whatever angle works for you right? You want it to be easiest for you, for your hand, for your placement. Sometimes I do things at slightly awkward angles because I'm trying to get them on camera. So once I have my stems in, I think I'm going to go ahead and put my buds on and then I'll know where I have the most negative space and where I really need one of those leaves. But just ahead of that, I'm going to go ahead and change over to my 103 tip. So my larger petal tip that I didn't use. So I've got it ready to go and that'll be allow me to use it for my sepals and it'll be really great. So we're going to get our flowers out and we're going to start placing those. We'll put on our whole, our smaller ones and add some little buds. So I'm going to go ahead and start placing some of these flowers. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my 103 tip, which I'm also going to use for my leaves. And I'm just going to make some little sepals. So just something for them to rest on, a little bit of green to kind of peek out. And I'm just using that same little motion where I'm kind of perpendicular to the surface. And I'm just drawing the bag out and back. 
and I want to give it a slight tilt so it's presented towards this side of the cake. So I'm just going to build up a tiny bit on that one side. That's going to give it something to rest on. And you can even do extra sepals. Let's see, pull down like this and it'll make it a little more natural. It gives it that green underneath and it looks like the sepals just kind of piling out, unfurling and gives you a little bit of negative space, but it gives you a little area to kind of prop that up on. And I'm gonna start with my favorite of my large ones. And this is a petite cake. So I'm not gonna use ones that are too, too big. And I just wanna make sure that I have a nice little angle to that. You can see it's supported by that green underneath so it should stay in place. It's got a little bit of an angle. It's kind of presenting itself. It looks lovely. And I'm gonna just keep working. So I'm gonna go here off to the side, do the same thing and put on one of my smaller ones that just stops at the pink. And if I need to, this is a good time to just work in between and put on a leaf if I need to here and there. And I think I might just put on one there. And right here. So just quick, small leaves. You can see it just adds a little bit of color into that space, gives it a nice little natural flow, takes up a little bit of that real estate. And then I'm gonna just prep these little areas over here for some more blossoms. And if your stems don't extend quite as far as you need them to, that's okay, right? You can always kind of pull it a little further over. You can use the sepals or just go back over your line to connect it. Sometimes when I'm planning this out, I don't give myself quite enough space and I just have to move things a little bit. Don't be afraid to do that and adjust as you go, kind of change your designs up, making fixes or tweaks that you need to. And I've got a lot of room here, so I'm going to use one of the slightly bigger ones I did. So you can see this one, it's smaller. The petals on the outside aren't as chunky because we're using that smaller tip. I'm going to do a slightly flatter presentation and just angle it a little bit this way. Beautiful. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to use an even more petite one. So I went in and I did some with extra petals that really kind of take up more space and some that were really kind of truly nice and petite, really small. And it's really easy to vary up the size on things just by doing extra layers or less on the petals. So you can see right away, we have a nice little presentation there. Beautiful little flowers. They look like they're floating. It's looking fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a larger leaf over here. So just like I did on my practice sheet, just make a beautiful little leaf. You can see it kind of changes the direction of the overall flow of things. It's looking really nice. I'm going to make some cute little sepals for my buds. So just some little lines going back towards the stem. And then I'm gonna change back to my number five tip and work on some little buds off to the side. So to do this, I'm just gonna do some smaller dots just kind of overlapping. So one in the center, two off to the sides, and then I'm going to use 
my colors that I have left over to just layer on some petals directly on the surface. So same kind of motion. Make sure you have the skinny end out away from what would be the center of the flower and just put on some little petals. And I'm going to use a little of my light green. and a little bit of my pink. And you might have to get in kind of awkward angles, but this will just give you the look of cute little buds over here. It's a little easier to see on this one. So I'm just gonna pull a couple of quick overlapping petals. So I'm gonna start the first one on top and then it's gonna be easier to work my way down. So just nice and short, There we go. So it just gives us a look like a nice little overlapping bud there on the side. And I'm just gonna repeat that and do that on this side as well. And because of the orientation, because it's facing down, I'm actually gonna have that skinny end so that it's pointing down. So just go overlap until you get a nice look to these that you like. But basically, as long as there's a couple of petals on there, it looks like petals, you get the idea of a bud and it's that nice, softer, lighter color. And there we have a beautiful three-dimensional ranunculus flower cake. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.